let's do some skincare together. Your diet isn't just what you eat, it is the content that you consume, it's the people you hang out with, it is the environment that you live in. Basically everything that you come in contact with. Which is why you have to be mindful of the things that you put into your body, emotionally, and spiritually. And I talked about this before, after I first read about it, but it couldn't be more true because when you think about it, every single time that you listen to a sad song, it makes you feel sad. And every time you have a good conversation with someone that you love, it probably makes you feel heard and appreciated. And that brings me to my point, which is, that the reason why I create my content, so everything that I post across channels, I wanna make sure that it leaves you, hopefully, maybe inspired, or maybe it motivates you, or maybe you learn something from it. Basically, any type of content that I create, I wanna make sure that it leaves you a little bit better than you were before. Because I would hate to either be a negative influence or just waste your time. I, I just don't want to do it. I don't want to contribute to it. Which is why some might say that the content that I create is unrealistic. I think that's the comment that I read. Someone said like, whatever you make, it's unrealistic. Like I'm unsubscribing. To me, I understand where they're coming from, right? Because as I said, I really try to make sure that the content that I create is pushing you in some way. And it doesn't mean that you have to do everything that I do. So for example, in my What I Eat In A Day videos, I really try to make things from scratch. The reason why I do it is not because I feel like everyone should make everything from scratch. I wanna inspire you to try new things and to try new recipes and hopefully find or make things that you enjoy and also fall in love with the process instead of seeing food as your enemy. I also don't think that everyone should be going through cycles of bulking and cutting and going to the gym like x amount of times per week otherwise it does like i don't want to that's not the vibe that i'm going for that's not wanna, what i want to show everyone i just want to show you that it is probably a good thing to push yourself every once in a while to move your body because it can actually give you more energy. It can make you feel stronger and as an additional bonus, you can reach physical goals that you might have. I read a post the other day, it was by Leila Hormozzi and she said that girls often struggle with the short hair syndrome. So the short hair syndrome is basically where your friend asks you like, should I cut my hair short? And then all her friends are saying like, yeah, you should, it looks so nice. But in fact, it doesn't look nice. She looks better with long hair. But the reason why they are saying it is because they want her to cut her hair short because somehow that makes them feel better because maybe then they feel like they look prettier or something. It's just basically rooted in envy or jealousy. I don't want to be a girl that has like the short hair syndrome rooted in any of the things that I do because I want to make sure that the people that I hang out with, the people that come in contact with me, that they get better from it. I truly believe that it is also the energy that you put out in the universe is what you will get back. It's in the type of people that you attract. It just creates a more pleasant life for everyone. But that being said, I fully understand that maybe what I try to do doesn't come across that way for everyone, which is absolutely fine. If that is the case, you don't have to watch this. You don't have to be here. It is absolutely okay if what I put out there is not for you. And then you can just decide not to watch the videos. But if you do, then please know that I am rooting for you. I want you to do better. I want you to feel better. I want you to just live the best life that you want to live authentically. That's my goal. And I hope that whatever I make contributes to that, even if it's just for 0.001%. So that was my skincare. Now let's go and make a quick shake and then I'll be back for some makeup. We're going to make a protein shake before training. I just want something light and then I'll have my second breakfast after. So I just picked up this portable blender. I don't know if it actually works, but I guess we'll figure it out together. 
So start it off with some liquid, then you can add your fresh fruits, which I'm not going to add, so I'll just skip it. Then leafy greens. I had some spinach, but it went bad. So I also don't have any leafy greens to add. Starts off great, this shake. We're going to add some protein powder, some peanut cashew butter. The protein powder I added is a chocolate flavor, by the way. Then I'm also going to add a tiny bit of cacao powder and some vanilla extract. Well, apparently I also ran out of vanilla extract, so I'm just going to do some cacao powder. And then I'm going to add some frozen banana, which I did prepare, so that's good news. It's very frozen. Okay, so let's see if this does something. That's actually really impressive because it's a really strong blender. Like it blended everything fully, which I did not necessarily expect. This is usually my go-to recipe whenever I feel like having a chocolatey protein shake that is thinner. So not like a really thick shake, but just something quick and easy, but it tastes 10 out of 10. So add the peanut butter, frozen banana, some cacao powder, and you'll have a great shake. So I think that we often don't really talk about what it's like being a female in a business world because it has its ups and downs for sure. And I mean, obviously it's different for everyone, but I feel, especially me, I have a very calm personality and I'm not someone who gets mad easily. I don't really get angry, but apparently that is like enough reason for people to not really take you seriously. And it is something that I don't wanna lose as a female because I really appreciate being able to be calm and just have like two sides to myself, like a softer side and then a stronger side. And I don't wanna lose that softer side or as I like to refer it as a more feminine side because I think it's also something that really works in your favor as a female because I really enjoy tapping into that energy and letting my creativity flow. But I think you have to be aware as a female that you, even though it's really nice that you have this duality to you, like both energies, when it comes to business, you cannot be too nice because it's already like you're one step behind almost. It's like be an independent boss, but don't be too independent. Like be strong and build muscles, but don't build too much muscle, like you're too muscular, you're too strong. It's always this, be this, but not too much, or be that, but not too much. There really is just one lesson that I've learned over the last couple of years, especially since doing social. You can have two outcomes in life, kind of dramatic, but you can have two outcomes. Either you stand for something, you take your own path, you make your own choices in life, you do what you want to do to live your best life, and there will be people that will dislike you, that don't agree with you, that just is how it will go. That's outcome number one. Outcome number two is that you will live your life trying to please absolutely everyone except yourself. So outcome number one, there are people that will dislike you. Outcome number two, you will dislike yourself. So in my opinion, there's really only one thing that you can do if you truly wanna live your best life, and that is to just do whatever you feel makes the world a better place, makes you a better person, and lights up your soul. And then if there are people along the way who disagree or who won't like you, that is just the sacrifice you have to make. Makeup is done, let's go and pick a gym fit and then go to the gym. It's crazy because I posted a video the other day where I was like showing my inspo when I first started training and then I posted a video of myself in 2021 where I actually realized that I reached my then goal physique. I mean, she was still more muscular than I am, but 
I mean, in terms of what I think looks good on my frame, I was like happy with what I achieved. So it's really crazy because sometimes short term, you feel like you're not making any progress and it's not going fast and you're not building strength or building muscle. But then when she, like once you zoom out, you'll realize that you actually are making progress. And the only thing you have to do is stay consistent. It's time to train. And today we're doing an upper body session, starting with a vertical pull. And we're going to do chin-ups. So whenever you're doing strength work, a lower rep range is more suited for it. And with a lower rep range, what I usually do is more sets to kind of make up for the, for the volume. We're going to do a row variation. And today we're doing a chest supported cable row, which is one of my favorite variations. So in my previous video, I did a vertical push alternating with a vertical pull and then horizontal push and pull to keep it balanced. Today we're doing the exact opposite. So I'm grouping all of my back exercises first and then I'm moving on to the other muscles just because I wanna change things up. So as the name already says it, you wanna make sure that your chest is supported so we don't have any momentum going on. And then we're just rowing the cable towards our belly button. And you should start with your weaker side first, which is not what I'm currently doing. Next exercise we are doing is targeting the chest. We're doing a push up, which you know is one of my favorite exercises, just because I was never able to do push ups. It was my first ever fitness goal. So now being able to rep them out still feels really unreal. But training your upper body in general, it helps so much with your posture and just feeling strong and healthy and fit. I highly recommend overloading your upper body as well. So even if you don't really feel like you wanna build your upper body muscles, then training in the lower rep ranges, training for strength, doesn't necessarily obviously have the goal of building muscle mass. It's not necessarily working in the hypertrophy rep ranges because building muscle is actually difficult to do. It's not something that just happens to people. But if you train in the lower rep ranges and focus on strength and doing push-ups, pull-ups, planks, it will help so much with just feeling good in your body. So we're doing push-ups today. I think last time I did them with weights in the lower rep range. Today I just want to rep them out, max reps, see what I have, see what I can do, and just hope for the best. <laughs> I'm just moving you over here because the next exercise that we are doing is an incline dumbbell press. This one targets mainly the chest, but the higher the bench is elevated, the more shoulder involvement you'll have. I actually really appreciate the 60 degrees incline neutral press. So that would have more of an incline. As you can see, it is at 30 now. 60 would be, this is 45. 60 would be here. So you still have, like it's not fully straight up, right? It's still at an incline. And then I really appreciate the neutral grip. So you'll have your elbows in, neutral grip, and then you do a pressing movement. This one will hit more so your shoulders than your chest, but it also has a bit of chest involvement. But that's not the exercise that we're doing today. Today, we are doing the 30 degrees incline press. It's a dumbbell press. I am elevating this one slightly. So again, it is mainly chest. Let's see how heavy this feels. Next up is an isolation exercise for the shoulders and I'm going to do the cable lateral raise. I really like this exercise because I can lean into the movement and increase my range of motion. But this exercise is so challenging because I'm still at the 
like just that one plate, it's already like almost too heavy, but obviously like I can't go any lighter because this machine doesn't go any lighter than one plate. But you lean into the movement and then you would do a lateral raise as you normally would. And I have the cable going between my legs. So I have one leg in front of the other and then I would lead with my elbow and go all the way back down. We have reached the final exercise for today and we're doing tricep dips. You can make dips more tricep focused or more chest focused depending on the angle of your upper body. Today we're doing it tricep focused since we already did enough for chest today. So we're doing the tricep dips and I'm doing them again in the more strength focused rep ranges. It's just a max rep for me. I'm not doing the assisted one. You can do them assisted if you have the contra weight. I'm just doing them with my body weight and just wrapping out as many reps as I can for four sets. Let's see if I still have any strength left in me because honestly this upper body workout was already pretty intense, but we'll see. Well, as today's training, we did a full upper body session. Don't skip training your upper body. Even if you don't want to build any muscle mass in your upper body, you can always focus on building your strength and just making sure that your entire body is balanced and strong for an overall healthy approach to life. <laughs> I am going home, I'm hungry. So let's make part two of breakfast. We're getting ready to make part two of our breakfast or breakfast number two, however you want to call it. And for this, I'm really craving toast with sweet butter. It is honestly one of the best things that you can eat because I love any form of carbs, but sweet butter is amazing. So I'm going to make it with salt and then cinnamon and honey. Making butter yourself is very, very easy. All you need is a mixer and double whipped cream or in Dutch, it is slagroom. And you need a cheesecloth. You technically don't need it, but it's really good to have. It makes it so much easier. So that's what we're going to make. And then I'm also going to make some asparagus and eggs, because as you maybe know, I really, really enjoy having some vegetables for breakfast, just because then I feel like I already had my vegetables for the day. So if I don't have them for lunch or dinner, then it's fine. I don't know, it's just, it's like an easy hack. So that's what we're making. And I'm just going to take you through everything. We're going to mix it until it is whipped cream and then some more. While the mixer is still mixing, I'm going to wash off the asparagus. I'm also going to break the asparagus because usually the point where they break is where you should cut them off. I pause the KitchenAid for a second, but if you can, don't interrupt the process. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to spread the asparagus over this lined baking sheet, and then I'm going to add a little bit of oil, and I'm going to add some Parmesan cheese. Now I'm going to put these in the oven and I'm going to continue the KitchenAid to mix up the butter. Couple of seconds and we are there. That's it. I made some eggs in the meantime. Now I forgot about them as I was watching the butter. And so they're a little bit crispy, but it's okay. And now that these are done, I'm just going to let them chill in the pan for a minute. I'm going to use my cheesecloth to get all the buttermilk out of the butter. This is an interesting part of the process. So I have a bowl here and I'm going to line it with the cheesecloth. And then I'm basically just going to pour all the butter and the buttermilk in here and then it will separate the milk from the actual butter. Now we're going to grab it and squeeze as hard as we can. <laughs> And 
And here we have the butter. I know, we just made this. Can you believe it, that we made this from whipped cream? Kind of crazy. As I said, I really wanna make it with honey and cinnamon. So what I'm doing is I'm going to add some honey. Going to add some cinnamon. And some salt. And then I'm going to mix this up. Let's build up our plate. So I have my toast here. I'm going to add some arugula with a bit of olive oil and some pepper. And I have my two eggs here. The other one. Adding some salt. Then I'll grab my asparagus. And then the star of the show the butter. So what we're doing is just, I don't think I have a butter knife, which is a shame, but I'm just going to grab some of the butter. And here is breakfast part two. So we have the toast with the butter made with honey and cinnamon and a bit of salt. We have the asparagus with the Parmesan cheese and then two eggs with some arugula, olive oil and pepper. 